Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode number seven. This week I have some ornament finishes, um, some whips, some plans for next week, of course some haul, um, and I'm going to announce the giveaway later in the video, so stay tuned for that. So last week I released um, a regular floss tube video, and then a couple days later I um, put out a video on how I frame my cross stitch pieces at home using the pinning method, and I got quite a few questions on um, the pinning and framing video and I thought I would go through a few of them here um, just to answer some common questions um, that came up. The first one was about um, trimming off uh, the excess linen after I've wrapped it around to the back. I like to leave the excess fabric um, on my piece just in case I ever want to unpin it and frame it a different way, finish it a different way, um, do something different with it. I don't like to cut off all the excess fabric. I think that's just me being uh, like, just in case, you know, like just, you know, I could just tuck it on the back. Nobody will see it. I close up the back of the frame. So if there's excess fabric back there, no one's going to know it's there but me. And it's just like peace of mind for me in case I ever um, want to take it out of that frame and frame it a different way. I have extra fabric to work with. Um, the other question, um, or another question I had was about the kind of batting I use. Um, I just use a 100% cotton, um, warm and natural usually, that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. Um, or just, I mean, I pretty much only use 100% cotton in my quilting, so whatever leftovers of cotton batting I have is what I use. Um, question about the double-sided mounting tape. So um, I use score tape, which is an acid-free double-sided mounting tape that I think is mostly used in scrapbooking. That's why I think I have it, because I used to do a lot of scrapbooking. Um, and it works great. It works great with my uh, linen. Um, let's see. Oh, and one thing um, that I had some questions on and then I forgot to address in the video itself is when you buy a standard frame um, at Hobby Lobby or Michaels, they come with usually with glass and with like a backing board um, to keep like your photo or print or whatever in the frame. But I remove those. Um, one, I don't need the backing because um, usually the foam board is thick enough and sturdy enough that when you fold the little tabs down, it holds everything into place and you don't need like a hard backer board. And a lot of times there might not be room. So store-bought frames, um, aren't as deep. Um, there's something called a rabbit on a frame and maybe I'll put like a diagram up so you know what I'm talking about. But it's like the depth of the frame where your artwork sits. And on store-bought frames that can be really thin because they're designed for like prints or for, you know, printed photos. They're not really designed for um, like a canvas or, you know, they're, they're designed for photos. Um, so I take the backing out uh, for sure because there's probably not gonna be room for it and I don't need it with the foam board. Um, and then I take, I don't use the glass that comes with store-bought frames because it's super reflective and glare, like there's a lot of glare with it. It's just not a high quality glass that comes in those store-bought frames. Um, I do like glass on my pieces um, if I'm doing custom framing because I can get the nice quality museum glass that looks like it's not even there. And they put the spacers in to raise the glass up off your needlework because you don't want glass directly touching your needlework. Um, I, I, I do want to look into seeing if about getting custom cut museum glass for when I frame at home, but that would significantly raise the cost. And I haven't had a problem with my pieces that haven't had glass on them. Um, so, you know, um, do whatever makes you happy there, but I don't like to use the store-bought glass because it's, it, it, it's a lot of glare and reflectiveness and it doesn't look very nice to me. So that's why I don't use it. Um, Let's see. Oh, another question I got was about if you could use sticky board instead of foam board to um, frame your piece. So I think you totally could. You just wouldn't, you wouldn't pin it. Like the sticky board, the sticky would be what held your piece down. Um, the reason I don't want to use it is because, like I mentioned at the beginning, if I ever want to unframe or take apart my piece and put it in a new frame, I don't want to peel my um, my stitching up off of sticky board. I feel like it would pull threads on the back. Um, it might distort the fabric. So 
I don't I don't want to use sticky board on my pieces because just on the off chance I ever want to reframe it later um, but I think if you have sticky board and you like using it then you could totally mount your piece on sticky board and use that in the frame um, instead of foam board so yeah doable Okay, so I think that's all the questions I had to answer. Um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments anytime. Um, I get in there and answer as many questions as possible throughout the week, so. Okay, um, let's start with finishes. This week, um, my mom finished all of the Lizzie Kate Tiny Tidings. Um, I had previously, she had previously finished this one and I had shown it to you, I think a couple videos ago, and now she has finished the other four and dropped them off and I got them all finished into ornaments last night. So let me show you. Here is Noelle. Dash away. No. And a little wintry house. I love this one. I think this one's my favorite. <laughs> um, and I did a very, here, let me hold them all up. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are cute. Cute, cute, cute. Um, so I did a very similar finish on all of them, which is that I used um, just some, what do you call it? Mat board. <laughs> um, I used mat board to mount uh, all of the pieces. And then I placed some sort of trim along the back edge. So it pop out here. Um, and then I used a felt square to cover up um, the messiness on the back. Um, and then I attached some sort of hanger. So this one got some little like baker's twine with a little um, bow, which I love. Um, this one just got a little black ribbon with some white pom poms. This one got the red pom poms and a red ribbon. And this one got some red rickrack and a red ribbon. And um, all of these are stitched with the called for colors. And they're all stitched on um, 28 count Monaco that I dyed using um, Rit dye. And these probably all started life as white Monaco. I'm pretty sure. And then I, I dyed them using a mixture of kind of the color I was going for with a little bit of brown and gray to muddy it up a little bit. Um, so these two are on kind of a rosy red, more bright pink, and a lime green. So yay, she finished all of the ornaments and the tidy tidings and has five new ornaments to hang on her tree. <laughs> so mom, what's your next project? Come on over. <laughs> okay, so let's get into whips um, and what I worked on this week. Um, so first off is The Visitor by Blackberry Rabbit. And I worked on this for several days, so I am making some really good progress. This is definitely very dense stitching, um, but it is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I love holding it up and seeing it on camera. Oh, I wanted to finish that beehive last night, but I was up too late stitching, so I had to go to bed. Oh, it's so cool. Um, as soon as I finish that beehive, I get to move on to the big... Um, colorful bird and I'm so excited <sighs> soon soon <laughs> um, I am stitching the visitor Ooh, hair going nuts today <laughs> we'll flip my hair um, okay so the visitor is being stitched on 40 count dusty road by seraphim fabrics which is lovely. I love, 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 love this fabric. Um, I ordered some more this week, or it came in this week. I ordered some a few weeks ago. <laughs> I'll show you that later. Um, but this is 40 count seraphim with all of the called for flosses. 
Get you close up. Okay, next I had a new start this week. One that I talked about starting in last week's video, and of course I started it. And that is Barbara Anna Designs, A Wicked Plant. And here is my progress on that. This is so fun. Um, I am changing all the colors on this. The only called for color I'm using is Raven, that kind of um, the black with a little hint of green that's all along the border. Um, oh my God, look at these little details. That tiny little spider and the cat and the bird with the key. This is my first ever Barbara Anna Designs and I've since looked at some other patterns and they're all so cool. Um, I don't know why I've never stitched anything by her. Um, but I'm so glad I found this one um, through Cindy's uh, Instagram page I mentioned last week. Um, and I am borrowing um, an idea from Cindy's version um, by changing um, the flowers to orange. And then I'm also changing the berries to kind of a terracotta and pink color, um, just to give it a little bit more color. I, I'm, a, I'm a color person. Um, but I just love, I love, 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 love. <laughs> How many times can I say love? Um, I love these, these colors. And I love this black with the little, like just all the little figures that are done in black. It looks so cool. Um, it's definitely different to the other things I stitch. Um, so I am stitching this one on vintage maple sugar, vintage maple syrup. Hold on. I'll look it up. I wrote it down. This is 40 count lakeside linen in vintage maple sugar. And it is a super pretty brown, mottled brown. Um, and I am not stitching the called for. I'll hold up um, kind of what I'm using in case anyone's interested. Here are the colors I'm using. Old money, cinnamon toast, wheat fields, burnt orange. Um, ginger snap, sable, possibly sticks and twigs, <laughs> and raven. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know, I was having like an existential crisis about the letters over here. I started them in sable. Um, I didn't know if I liked it, if it was too light. I need to stitch some more words and figure out what I like. Um, I've been going back and forth about ripping it out and changing it to a new color, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, for now, I just kind of wanted to stitch on the urn full of flowers and get that all in place before I make a decision on the letters. So that is my plan. And I can't wait to get back to stitching this one. I stitched this one at the beginning of the week and loved it. So next up is um, the Prairie Schooler Animal Alphabet. All the little animals. Um, and I am stitching this um, for my nephew, Andy. So I'm actually stitching Andrew and I've got the first three blocks done. I'm halfway done. I've got a weasel, an elephant and a raccoon. <laughs> oh my God. This is really funny. Um, also a super, super lovely, uh, person who watched my, vi uh, video where I talked about this the first time. Um, and I was kind of laughing about the letter in um being for nine tailed arm or nine ringed armadillo <laughs> um and kind of like what a stretch what a weird thing um she charted out in is for narwhal for me um and sent it to me via email and i think i'm totally gonna use it so um maybe whenever i get back to this one um I just, you know, obviously have the D and then when I get to the N, I think I might try and stitch the uh, narwhal instead of the nine ringed armadillo. So I'll let y'all know how that turns out. Um, this I'm stitching on a 28 count ivory linen. Um, and just from Zweigart, just a non hand dyed. And I'm stitching it with the called for DMC floss. 
except I did switch out, um, I think I added in this 3371 because the dark brown that called for was, there wasn't enough contrast on uh, between this and the dark brown. So I added in 3371 instead. But other than that, I'm using um, all the called for, all the called for DMC. And it's very fun, very cute. Um, I think Andy will be very excited to have some little cross stitch animals in his room, so. Okay, and um, the last thing I worked on this week was Consider the Lilies. This is by um, Heartstring Samplery. And it is gigantic. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the user, <clears throat> the Instagram user's name, but somebody, I saw a finish on Instagram this weekend of Consider the Lilies. Um, if you go to the I think consider the lilies hashtag um, or consider the lily sampler. I can't remember now, but um, go check it out because somebody finished theirs and it's spectacular. Um, okay. It's always the trick on how to hold this up. Here we go. Here is consider the lilies. Um, I think I showed you I'd worked across over to the tree um, and started working on some branches and that snake. Um, I put a, oh, I added that tree at the bottom, um, the green tree with the little orange berries. And yeah, just put in some more details in here. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I work on this for hours and it looks about the same, but it's huge. That's just what's going to happen. This one is still so much fun to stitch. It's got all of the beautiful, lovely colors. Um, and just all the little motifs are so much fun to stitch on. They're each like a little tiny finish. Um, just trying to give you a close up view. Yeah. So fun. Okay. So that was considered the lilies. Oh, but before, I always do this. Why do I always forget? I am stitching this on 40 count Winter's Brew by R&R. &R. Um, I think the called for is 28 count Winter's Brew, but I uh, prefer 40. So I'm doing 40 count and I'm stitching one over two and I'm using all the called for floss except for I think one or two that I had to sub out for a similar color just because I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, consider the lilies, yay. Okay, huh, so you might notice, um, I didn't show you my Christmas stocking this week. Ooh, um, I've been just kind of all over the place without, like a man without a plan, no plan. I've just been stitching on whatever I wanna stitch on, which is always my MO, but um, I do have actual things <laughs> with a deadline that I wanna get done. And one is that stocking, um, you know, it needs to get done. Um, Christmas so I can hang it up and I really want to get some fall um, smalls done for my front entryway I have a little basket that I put my cross stitch pillows in that I've showed you and I had a bunch for summer and I want a few for fall so I can switch them out um, otherwise the summer is just gonna be there until I put Christmas in there <laughs> um, so I decided that I'm gonna make a plan for the next two weeks um, and see if I can stick to it we'll see I don't ever like I don't ever do mania or jolly July or, you know, like I don't, I don't ever, I don't ever stick to a plan, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to try anyways. Um, so I'm going to call it, I looked this up and I don't know if this already exists, but I'm going to call it fall frenzy because I'm going to give myself two weeks. I'm going to start three new projects and I'm going to try and get them done in two weeks. I think it's totally doable. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I'll hold them up. I'll show you. You can tell me if you think it's doable or not. Uh, and so what I, what I, my, my plan is to start three new small um, fall projects, continue working on a wicked plant because I also want that done by this Halloween and work on my Christmas stocking because that has a deadline as well. So those five things are I don't know. They're going to be the only things I work on the next two weeks, unless I get a finish. So if I finish one of um, my fall smalls or a wicked plant, um, then I'll let myself work on one of my, my big samplers. Um, 
but otherwise I'm going to focus the next two weeks and get um, these this fall stuff started and finished so I can, you know, switch over um, my um, decor when it, when it gets to September. So yeah, so that's my plan. Um, let me show you the things that I have picked out that I've fully kitted and ready to start over the next two weeks. Um, so first up is going to be from Lizzie Kate. And I am going to start this autumn, um, autumn small from, let's see, what is this called? Seasons, Lizzie Kate Seasons. Uh, and this is like, I think it's 32 count they call for, and it's like a two by four. So I'm just going to finish it into a, a little rectangular pillow. And I have pulled a piece of 36 count fawn um, from Pictureless Plus. And I have pulled the called for colors with a couple subs. It calls for all weeks, so and I pulled a couple of classic color works um, just to fill in the missing pieces. So that is going to be one of my starts. Um, another start is going to be a restart of my Heart and Hand Ye Old Crow sampler. Um, so <laughs> I told you last week I started this, didn't cut my fabric correctly, but I figured out I could still make it work. So again, this one is on 36 count fawn. Um, I just, <laughs> I feel like the color and the modeling on this really lend itself well to kind of Halloween type. So um, I'm going to stitch this with black coffee. And that'll be another start. So the last one I'm going to start is going to be the Spooky Tree by Trilogy. So cool. I love this. I don't have any little buttons though. I might have to um, run into Joann's or something and try and find some little orange buttons because that's really cute. Or maybe, maybe I have some random buttons somewhere. I'll look. Um, and then I'm going to stitch this on a piece of 36 count Zweigart that I, this is actually um, the same color as my Land That I Love piece. This is um, a part of the excess fat half that I cut off. So this is limestone Zweigart that I over dyed with black and, or er, gray and brown rip dye. So just another little 36 count. And here are the called for colors. So I love the little bit of purple in there for Halloween. That's like the only time I like purple is for Halloween. <laughs> so cool. So anyways, I have three little fall smart, or. Er, fall starts, fall small starts. Um, and I think I'm going to call this like hashtag fall frenzy. I looked on Instagram and of course hashtag fall frenzy is there and it looks like it's filled with like fishing pitch pictures. Like is um, like professional fisherman is like fall frenzy a thing. I don't know, but I'm going to take it over with cross stitch. So if anybody else has like some fall stitching that they're like I want to get this done by September or October or whatever, you know, like, please join me. Um, I'm going to start probably today posting some starts on Instagram. Um, so if anybody wants to join me over the next two weeks and knock out some fall stitching, that is my plan. Okay, so um, let's get to the giveaway. Uh, last week, I had put an extra copy of Oh Joyous Day up um, for one of you guys to win. Um, I just asked you to leave a comment with the word joy in it um, and tell me your favorite Blackbird designs, which I got so many comments that were so great. Um, a lot of people saying like, how do you expect me to choose? Um, I know, <laughs> I know, like they're all great. Um, I have like 18, I wanna start right now. So I get it. Um, I appreciate those of you who get, did give me a favorite um, and appreciate those who were like, how? How would I even do that? Um, also, I learned that Christmas Garden is far and away the most common answer. Everybody has loved stitching Christmas Garden. And I was like, oh, I've seen it, but like I hadn't bought it. Well, I went out and bought it. Um, don't worry, <laughs> I remedied that. Uh, because yeah, everybody was talking about Christmas Garden in their comments. And I was like, okay, yes, <laughs> off to buy it. And also I didn't realize it only took four colors of floss to create that beautiful pattern. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about that one. I don't know when I'll start it because uh, it is large, large. <laughs> um, someday, 
I bought it. Thank you all for your sweet, sweet comments. Um, so the winner of this Oh Joyous Day pattern um, was Tina Jensen. So Tina, congratulations. Um, if you'll just get in contact with me um, through Instagram or my email address listed below and send me your address, I will get this mailed out to you ASAP. So thank you guys all for entering. I appreciate it. Um, so let me show you what came in the mail this week. Um, I learned a term watching Floss Tube, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, called stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. Um, and it made me laugh and I was like, oh, good thing I'm young, young, young. Um, and don't have to worry about that. I might be hitting that point sometime soon. I buy all the pretty things I find. It's getting embarrassing, but I'll show it to you anyways. <laughs> Um, I was looking to kit up some things from the Sewing Club book, and why am I going out of order? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Y'all don't know my order. Let's pretend this is in order. I was looking to kit up some things out of, um, my Sewing Club book that I had shown you in the sampler video, um, of things that, you know, I want to stitch. And I found this website, um, called Anita's Little Stitches. And she does a lot of thread packs for um, popular patterns. And so I was able to kit up my little um, summer pin keep drum. Here, I'll show you the pattern so you know what I'm talking about. It's called A Bit of Summer. So um, I already had the pink sanguine linen and I bought the thread pack from her. And so now I've got this one ready to go and ready to be started which is dangerous because every time I kit something up, I'm like, oh, how about I just start it now? But no, no, I have too many things kitted up. They can't all get started. Um, and then the other thing I finished kitting up, I just was missing a couple flosses, uh, was the Tiny Treetops Rose and Thyme um, sampler, which is definitely the first thing I want to start out of the Sewing Club book. I am just obsessed. I love this so much. Even the frame, like, I need to look in the details and figure out where they got this framed and just copy it because this whole thing is just beautiful. Um, and so I got the last remaining colors and I got the piece of fabric I needed in the mail. Um, so now I'm all ready to start. This is 36 count doubloon by Picture This Plus with all the called for weeks. And for now, before um, I have projects started, whenever I kit them up, I like to put them in a bag so everything stays together. And since both these projects are in the same book, um, I just put all the supplies in this one bag so it's all together. And then I have a basket for kind of like kitted up projects um, so I can just dive into that when I need a new start. Okay, um, another thing I got from Anita's site is a pattern I had not seen before. It's a Loose Feathers Blackbird Designs pattern called Winter Wonderland. And it's just so cool. It's like Christmassy, but not overly. And like, look at the little like geese and stuff. Um, and that cool green viney border. Um, and then I bought the thread pack. Um, it was all folded up, so it's a little wrinkly, but... Uh, yeah, so I got all the called for flosses. Looks like it's a mix of classic color works, gentle arts, and weeks. Um, so this one is almost complete, kit, completely kitted up. I don't think I'll get to it for this Christmas, but I just loved it. And yeah, it's so cool. And it even has um, a little pin cushion pattern in it as well that's really pretty that maybe I could do for my little pillow bowl. So. Um, the last thing I got from Little Stitches is the most adorable tiny pair of scissors I've ever seen in my life. Um, I have kind of fat thumbs. They like barely fit, <laughs> they barely fit in these scissors. Look at them. Oh my God. They're like, oh, look at this. <laughs> my thumb barely fits. They're so tiny. Uh, they're called Little Gems 
I'm not like a scissor person. I don't buy fancy scissors normally, um, but I needed a few new pairs. So I was like, oh, let me try out some from her website. <laughs> oh my God. They're the tiniest, cutest little scissors I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so really happy with those. <laughs> Even if they make my hand look like a giant. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so from 123 Stitch, I kitted up um, Christmas Eve by Prairie Schooler. Totally, totally Misty Purcell's fault. Um, she showed, I think in her most recent video, a framed, a newly framed version um, of Christmas Eve. And uh, I loved it <laughs> so much that I ran to one, two, three stitch and was like, add all flosses, click. Um, like one, two, three stitch probably needs to send me a cease and desist at this point. Like it's probably like every four days I place an order for something and I'm sure they know my name and they're like, what is this lady doing? Is she starting a really expensive cross stitch store? Cause she buys everything retail. Like what is happening? Um, what's happening is I want to stitch everything and I keep buying everything. So one, two, three stitch, please don't cut me off. <laughs> um, and then I got the call for DMC. So yeah, I don't know when I'll stitch that, but I have it. Um, okay. So last bit of cross stitch haul is I got a couple of new fabrics from Seraphim Fabrics. I love, 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 love stitching on that dusty road so much. And I'd gotten a couple other colors um, and I was like, let me go see what else she has. So I got these two new colors. Um, this one is a 36 count antique lace. Really lovely beige um, with some gray. Um, really really pretty love this and um the next one i got is a 36 count bump in the night and these are both linens by the way they do seraphim fabrics dyes i think ada and even weave and stuff but um i just have bought the linen so this is 36 count bump in the night which is such a cool spooky gray and i want to use this on something halloween um, or even something like one of the chalk series. I've never done any of the heart or hand, heart and hand, or no, hands on design. That's what it is. Kathy Haverman, hands on design or Priscilla from Priscilla and Chelsea. Um, they have, you know, a lot of fabric designs on, or a lot of cross stitch designs on black fabric. And I don't think I would enjoy that. Um, I don't know. I actually haven't ever tried stitching on black. I'm just I don't know, uh, but I figured this might be a good alternative because it's like a pretty cool dark gray with modeling. Um, it definitely has some lighter patches, but um, I thought that might, you know, one of the chalkboard designs might look cool on this. So I'll find something to use this um, with and yeah, I love it. So, okay, so that's all the haul y'all. Um, let's get into Quilt Corner. Uh, <laughs> so one other thing that came in the mail this week, <laughs> is a um a stack of fabric from then came june um i think i had mentioned her um her name's megan um she is a quilt designer um and i've i've made uh one of her quilt patterns before and it's awesome um actually if i have a good picture i think i do i'll put it up so you can see the quilt i've made by her it's called meadowland for any other quilters out there it's a very popular pattern um she has a ton of good a ton of cool quilt patterns and they all take like fat quarter or half yard bundles and so she put together some kind of curated fabric bundles for some of her quilt patterns and I actually don't know what quilt pattern I'll use with this bundle but the fabrics were too pretty and I just jumped all over it when she offered it so oh gosh do I know the name of it she had like three bundles I feel like this one was like is this desert sunrise oh I don't know I'll or something with rosé. I don't remember. Um, but she had a few different bundles and I actually don't know if they're even still available. They might be sold out. I'm not sure. Um, but look how cool. 
Um, these are all Moda fabrics. And they're all just lovely. Just so lovely. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna find a cool quilt pattern and make myself a very bright and colorful quilt out of all this fabric at some point, maybe in time for next summer, because it is a very summery ice cream sherbet sunset type, you know, of palette. And I love it. So um, that's the first stop in Quilt Corner. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is my little sister, Allison. Um, she made a baby quilt. Um, we have the top finished. Um, I say we, but she made it all. Um, I just was here for support and guidance. Uh, she's not, she's the only one of my sisters who's not really um, a crafter, a sewer, anything. She she knows how to knit. Um, she's probably forgotten by now, but you know, like she knit a pair of booties once. Uh, she totally has a capability, but just not the like attention span for it, I think. Um, but she had a friend uh, have a little baby girl recently and she was like, I really wanna make a baby quilt for her. Um, and she had bought some really cool fabric. So we sat down and came up with a pattern. Um, it, I just kind of did a modified rail fence pattern for her. And um, yeah, let me show you what her quilt top looks like. Yay! I'm not gonna be able to get it all in frame. <laughs> showing quilts on floss tube is so hard um maybe I'll take a picture of this and insert it too or something I don't know or you know you get the idea it's basically um a rail fence where the inside stripes here well it's not a three and three like a traditional rail fence um we did uh I think these are nine inch square blocks and we did some thicker stripes of the prints and then found a coordinating solid um to go with all the fabrics in the center stripes and yeah, it's so fun. There's some Heather Ross fabrics. Um, oh my gosh, these swans. Oh, they're upside down, but you get the idea. A little floral, um, some little crosshatch. Yeah, just like bright, happy, happy, fun fabrics. Uh, some she had bought and some we mixed in from my fabric stash. And I, t I showed her, you know, how to use the rotary cutter, the rulers. She cut everything out herself. Um, she pieced all of it. I was here, you know, <laughs> telling her when she needed to unpick and try again <laughs> or or it was good and just keep moving on. Um, you know, so I think she had a good time doing it. Allison, you can leave a comment below, but your quilt top is beautiful. So yay. Um, yeah, that's Quilt Corner. Thanks for joining me. Um, and actually, I think that's all I have to share with you guys this week. Um, this is a fun week. I I didn't get done what I wanted to get done because I didn't work on my Christmas stocking, but that's okay. I have a plan for the next two weeks. Um, I'm gonna get crazy with fall stitching. Fall frenzy, hashtag fall frenzy. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to show you guys my progress next week um, and maybe a hundred other things I've bought. Who knows? Come back next week and let's find out. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Bye.